A few months ago, I did a lot of videos about my reread of the New Jedi Order series, which covers the Yuuzhan Vong War. The Yuuzhan Vong are essentially the big bad of the post-Endor period of Star Wars, with a lot of the events over the kind of immediate post-Endor period. Over the course of this 19-book arc, with some other short stories thrown in, the Yuuzhan Vong, which were a race of extragalactic invaders that used organic technology, their starships were actually grown rather than being built, were able to take take over almost the entire galaxy. There's two kind of main topics I want to talk about here, the first being how they accomplished this, and the second, which is going to be its own video next week, is going to be about whether the Republic, CIS, and Empire could have fared any better against the Vong. And I think some of my thoughts on that will become kind of evident from today's video, but we'll go into more depth next week. When talking about how the Yuuzhan Vong were successful over the New Republic in particular, which represented the majority of the galaxy at the time, it's important to keep two aspects in mind, I think. There's the military aspects, but there's also the political aspects. We'll talk about the direct military aspects first. One thing that led to a lot of the Yuuzhan Vong's success is that their ships and their warriors were quite strong. This came from, partially, the way that their technology worked. Like I said, they are using organic ships that are fully grown. A societal caste known as the Shapers were responsible for shaping these organisms. Some were as small as fighters, and others were as large as Super Star Destroyers, or even larger with the Yuuzhan Vong world ships. Their projectile weapons tended to be these things called the Eret Cores, which were effectively little mini volcanoes, or if you want to think of it in a grosser way, little zits that would shoot asteroids and rocks at other ships. This would obviously have different characteristics from the kind of missiles or proton torpedoes or laser cannons used by the factions that we typically think of as inhabiting the Star Wars galaxy. However, it's harder to say that this is something that gave the Yuuzhan Vong a direct advantage or disadvantage over the factions that we already know. There was one aspect of their technology that did, especially at the start of the war, grant them huge technological advantages over the New Republic, the Empire, and other factions like the Havens. These were the Dovin basils. Dovin basils are essentially other little shaped organisms that existed within the broader organism of the Yuuzhan Vong ships, and they were able to create little black holes and manipulate gravity. These were used as both analogs for shielding and for propulsion, so by manipulating gravity they would be able to move their ships along, but they would also be able to, at the point where an impact would happen from another projectile, create a small black hole and absorb all the energy of a projectile. This was essentially how they would shield their ships. In a smaller engagement or a one-on-one -on -one fight, this would often mean that the Yuuzhan Vong ships were able to absorb all the possible damage from their adversaries. They would be able to take a full burst from an X-Wing, the Millennium Falcon, a capital ship if you're talking about larger ships, and it would really skew engagements to kind of seeming unwinnable. By the time the New Republic and Empire figured out the way to deal with this, the Yuuzhan Vong had already spread over so much of the galaxy that finding out this major advantage had its own flaws didn't really do them much good. It was something that they were able to exploit and led to them being able to win the war later. But at the start of the war, this was something that conferred a huge advantage for the Yuuzhan Vong, and it's hard to overstate just how important this was. Now, the way that they ultimately figured out how to deal with this was that if you were to hit the same ship from different angles or to stagger your shots just enough, the Dovin Basil wouldn't be able to keep up enough energy to deflect or absorb all the shots. This was done by sometimes tilting the lasers on an X-Wing to be slightly off so that the single black hole wouldn't be able to absorb them all, or under the Empire, they ended up having to have usually two TIE fighters working in concert to blow up a single Coral Skipper. Having a direct 2 to 1 advantage in all cases when you're talking about fighters would obviously not be super sustainable, but when this was happening, the TIE fighters were able to pretty easily take on coral skippers because beyond the Dovin basils, coral skippers were actually relatively fragile, and this is true of a lot of Yuuzhan Vong ships. Once they weren't able to just beat up one foe at a time, or to completely absorb the damage that they would have otherwise taken, then it became a lot harder for Yuuzhan Vong ships to survive, even on relatively even terms and even engagements. Now, I've mostly used the example of 
starfighter combat here, but you can sort of see how this would scale throughout frigates, cruisers, capital ships, and even super ships on both sides. While you can overload shields locally, there tended to be a bit more armor on the kind of known galaxy factions, and shielding worked a bit differently where there was still able to be a full protective bubble, even if it wasn't quite as strong in any one local area as the Yuzon Vong stuff were. For example, it was often common in strategies using starfighters or bombers that you would overload a bunch of proton torpedoes on one part of a shield. That would then break that shield locally and hit the ship under it. This is how the X-Wing books uh, portray Rogue Squadron taking down a Lancer frigate, when for the Yuzon Vong it was kind of the opposite, where by putting all that firepower locally, the Dovin Basils were able to absorb it all. There was a second aspect, or I guess a mix of two aspects that contributed to the Yuzon Vong's early victories as well. There was the training element and the numerical element. There's a few more layers to it than this, but the Yuzon Vong were essentially a warrior species. They very highly valued their warriors, and they took war very seriously. They were essentially coming in with these generational goals of conquering the galaxy after looking for a new home when their own home galaxy was destroyed in previous wars. They were coming in basically ready for a fight and looking for a fight. They had gone their whole lives training for this, whereas on the opposite side in the New Republic, even though there had been wars for quite some time, nobody was expecting a war on the scale of what was to come, and a lot of the more experienced soldiers and starfighter pilots were starting to retire, and a lot of the people who were in active service, which was again very reduced, which we're going to talk about in a second, were kind of green. They didn't really know what they were doing, and they were going to be facing the brunt of the initial invasion of the Yuzon Vong forces. The Yuzon Vong War took place in 25 ABY through 29 ABY, and this was about 10 years after the major fighting with the Empire had finished. There were still some skirmishes going on and some smaller Imperial factions that were causing trouble, but for the most part, the military was on smaller policing duties, and a lot of the power had been devolved to local governments. The Central New Republic military had downsized significantly, and a lot of older ships had been taken out of commission. Even the high command staff of the New Republic's forces had seen some reductions and some swaps in personnel with Borsphalia now in charge of the New Republic that led to some political appointments for military jobs rather than necessarily being who was the most qualified or who was the most experienced. And part of this was that a lot of people were retiring. Wedge Antilles, Admiral Akbar, these are all names that had kind of left military service or were going up to more desk-oriented jobs. But it wasn't until much later in the war that people like Akbar started to get back involved. The Supreme Commander of the New Republic Forces, and later the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, was Cien Sov. It would be unfair to call Cien Sov necessarily a bad Supreme Commander, but he was generally seen as someone who was more of a peacetime caretaker, rather than having any of the tactical brilliance that his predecessor Admiral Akbar had. A lot of which came from Akbar's own experience having run the war against the Empire for so long. Akbar was pretty well advanced in his age at this point. Point. And if you listen to TapCap Transmissions, my podcast with Eck, you'll know that he was also very busy with Winter. But he was able to come in an advisory position for CN Sov, and a lot of the plans that they came up with kind of revolved around making sure that a lot of the New Republic forces would have the opportunity to have smaller engagements with Yuzon Vong to train them up before going for major offensives. So they were able to turn this kind of green New Republic defense force into a more seasoned force able to take on the New Republic at major engagements, for example, the retaking of Coruscant. Numerically, the Yuzon Vong actually didn't have a huge amount of ships. They had a pretty vast armada, but when you're thinking about it against the entire galaxy, then it wouldn't have been super overwhelming. The problem was that this was at the tail end of decades of galactic war that had left the population both exhausted from war and looking for a period of peace, looking forward to a period of peace, which they thought they had reached, but also a lot of stuff had just been destroyed. There there wasn't the same buildup of thousands of years of sector forces, or the same idea that there was a need to have this pre-built up military force. They thought they were heading into a period of peace. So even though the Yuzon Vong had a lot of sick world ships, there were some that were even dying, and they were at the tail end of a long intergalactic voyage that was kind of leaving them relatively weak. 
there was more parity of forces between the New Republic and the Yuuzhan Vong than might have otherwise been expected. The big thing that let the Yuuzhan Vong take advantage of this is the political element, which we're going to talk about now, and that'll be the final point for today's video before we get next week into whether the Empire, Republic, or CIS could have done any better. So while the Yuuzhan Vong definitely represented a huge threat to the New Republic and the galaxy as a whole, it is possible that had there been a better, more coordinated initial response to the Yuuzhan Vong, that they never would have been able to get quite the same foothold that they were able to and make such great strides into the galaxy. This is especially true at the beginning, but there was also political dissent that stopped any progress later on, which we're going to talk about a bit as well. A lot of the galaxy really was expecting this to become a more peaceful period. So when the Yuuzhan Vong invaded, a lot of people didn't want to believe it, and the core especially, they thought of it as a problem for the Outer Rim. With the initial assaults at Helska IV, Cernpidal, Dubrillion, these were all Outer Rim worlds that were somewhat close to Imperial territory, rather than being anywhere near the core of the New Republic. So the core, much like they always did, kind of threw the Outer Rim out to dry, and they really saw it as maybe the Yuuzhan Vong will be happy with the Outer Rim and then we don't have to worry about it, when it was pretty clear that no, the Yuuzhan Vong were going to continue their conquest forever. And for anyone who knows anything about history, then this is clearly something that reflects our own history. Former Chief of State Leia Organa Solo was working a lot with the humanitarian relief efforts with the refugees that were coming from a lot of these Outer Rim worlds, which I did another video on earlier, and a lot of the members of Boris Felia's government basically just shunned her and didn't believe her when she was trying to advocate for the use of New Republic military assets to go and fight the Yuuzhan Vong in the Outer Rim, rather than just kind of biding their time and maybe if they had to, fighting them later. Normally this would be seen as a core versus Outer Rim or Mid Rim situation, but in this situation, the core had the support of other sectors that weren't necessarily considered core worlds themselves, but were on the opposite side of the galaxy from the Yuuzhan Vong threat. So Bothan Space, for example, was seeing this as also not their problem, with Chief of State Boris Falea being a Bothan as well. The Yuuzhan Vong had done a lot to sow some of this dissent and discord, though there was a lot to take advantage of within the galaxy's historical prejudices. Nomenor, one of the Yuuzhan Vong agents, had been present for up to several decades, being an agent within the New Republic or Imperial governments, or being involved in smaller, more local issues like the Ramamul Osorian conflict that kind of made a cover for the Yuuzhan Vong to be able to expand the way they did. It was really only when the Yuuzhan Vong broke past Duro that the Core Worlds finally decided, okay, we need to be all in on this. And even when there were specific engagements being fought, there were political contentions within different elements of the New Republic that made it difficult to fight back properly, and in one pretty egregious case, the Battle of Fondor contributed to the loss of almost the entire Haven fleet, but that warrants its own video. Luckily, the galaxy finally did kind of come together with the New Republic not only unifying against the Vong, but also the formation of the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances. This was an amalgamation of the New Republic, the Empire, the Hapens, and pretty much all the people of the galaxy against the Yuuzhan Vong. This became the New Republic's successor government and would lead the galaxy for the next couple decades. It's hard to say exactly what would have happened if the galaxy had united against the Vong earlier. There were still elements within the New Republic Defense Force that were working with Gelad Pelion against the Yuuzhan Vong as early as Ithor. But even if it wouldn't have been a completely different situation, it's pretty easy to see that a big part of what allowed the Yuuzhan Vong to get such a strong foothold and be almost unopposed as long as they were was that there was no real unity beyond the, behind the response. Leia was in charge of kind of rallying as many forces as she could and getting as much sympathy as she could, but it really wasn't enough. Either way, that's going to do it for this week's video on the Yuuzhan Vong invasion. Next week, we are going to talk about whether the CIS, Republic, and Empire could have done any better against them. You may be able to pick up on part of my answers from some of what we're talking about here. But hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's one of the longer ones on the channel, I think. Let me know in the comments if there are any other subjects you'd like to see me cover. And if you have enjoyed the video, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, everyone.